Hello, in this video I'm going to teach you everything you need to know about indices for GCSE Maths. So I'm going to timestamp below the different parts of the video so you can skip through to the part that is most useful to you. And so I think the best place to start is what is an indice. And so say we had something like this, uh, 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. Well we could write that as 2 to the power of 4. Okay, And so we call this little number here the power or the index. Okay, And we call the big number on the bottom the base okay and so all this tells me is the power tells me how many times I'm gonna multiply the base by itself and so that's what we mean when we talk about indices we're talking about these little numbers in the top so let's take a look at some rules to do with indices that we can use so this is the first one okay so say we have 3 to the power of 4 multiplied by 3 squared well we could write that as 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 that's my 3 to the power of 4 multiplied by 3 squared, which is 3 times 3. And so let's see, how many 3s do we have there now? So we've got the 4 here, okay, and then we've got the 2 there. And so really what we're saying is, well, we're just going to be multiplying 3 by itself 6 times, okay, because there are 6 3s there. And so we could really just write that as 3 to the power of 6. So there is a little pattern, you could do more examples and see it. And basically all we're going to be doing is, well, you just add the powers together. So we're going to get 3 to the power of 4 plus 2. And that gives me 3 to the power of 6, like we want. And so this only works, this rule of adding the powers, if our bases are the same. And you can see here the base is 3 for both of them. They're both 3. So we can get a generic rule to help us with this, and that says if we've got some number a to the power of m, where m is just a number, and I multiply it by the same number a, but to say it could be the same or a different power, n, then that's equal to a to the power of m plus n, like that. Okay, so that is the first rule we're going to look at. The second rule is if we're dividing uh, powers. So we've got 2 to the power of 4 divided by 2 squared. So let's write this out the long way. So we've got, well, 2 to the power of 4 is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, like this. And then that is all divided by 2 squared, which is just 2 times 2. And so looking at that, we can actually cancel out some of these 2s, so like these ones and these ones. And so we're left with just 2 times 2, which is just 2 squared. And so again, there's another pattern here, which is, well, what we're really doing is just subtracting the indices. So we're doing two to the power of four minus two, which is just two squared. And again, this only works if our base is the same. So in that example, the base was two. And so a general rule for this could be, say we had some number a to the power of m, and we divide it by the same number a, but to maybe a different power n, then that's equal to a to the power of m subtract n like that. So that's pretty easy too. Let's have a look at the third rule, which says, say we've got seven squared, all to the power of three. Well, that's equal to seven squared times seven squared times seven squared. And you could then express that as seven times seven times seven times seven times seven times seven. Or we could just use rule one, which says we can add the powers together. And so we're gonna get seven to the power of six. But again, there's a, a quicker way to do this, which is, well, if we've got one power in the bracket all to another power, we can just times those powers together. So we're going to get 7 to the power of 2 times 3, which is just 7 to the power of 6. And so we can generalize this for any number. So say we had something a to the power of m, and that is all to the power of n, then that is equal to a to the power of m multiplied by n. So again, pretty easy rule. Okay, And these are probably the three sort of trickiest rules to remember. So let's look at another rule. And so say we have a number, so in this example it's 23 to the power of zero. Well, that just equals one, okay? And any number you have, it could be, I don't know, 100,000. If it's to the power of zero, it's always gonna equal one. And so the rule we could write for this is say a, which is just any number to the power of zero, well, that's gonna equal one. So again, pretty easy. Let's have a look at rule five, okay, which is when we've got a fraction. So you can see we've got two thirds, all to the power of 4. And I'm now thinking for this example, I'm going to change this to squared just because it's a bit easier for me. So say we've got 2 thirds all squared, then we just bring the power inside of the brackets to the 2 and the 3. So that just becomes 2 squared divided by 3 squared. And so we get 4 over 9. And that works whatever your fraction is. So say we have a generic fraction, a over b, like this. 
and that is raised to some power, I'll call it n, but it could just be a number, then that's equal to a to the power of n divided by b to the power of n. And it works the other way. So if you were given this here, you could pull out the uh, indice and put brackets around everything else. So again, pretty easy. Rule six is if we've got something to the power of one, and then that just equals itself. So 42 to the power of one is just 42. And so say we had a to the power of one, it's just equal to a. So again, another easy rule. Okay, rule seven is where people find it a bit trickier. This is when we've got negative powers. So the first example we're gonna look at is four to the power of negative one. But it's still not that tricky. If there's a negative, to remove it, so to get rid of it, all you have to do is flip it or take its reciprocal. So four to the power of negative one, if we flip that, then we get one over four to the power of one. And four to the power of one is just four, so we just get one over four. So let's take a look at five to the power of negative two next, okay? And so you can see, well, we, to get rid of this negative here, I'm gonna flip it or take its reciprocal. And so we're gonna get one over five squared. And now I just do five squared or five to the power of two and we get one over 25. So again, it's not that tricky. With fractions, it works the exact same way. So we've got a half to the power of negative one. So I'm just gonna flip the fraction to remove the negative. And so we get two over one and that is just equal to two. And the last example with this, we've got two thirds to the power of negative two. So again, I wanna remove this negative, which means I'm gonna flip my fraction. So we're gonna get three over two, and now my index has become positive. And so now I could do three squared over two squared, and we get nine over four as our answer. Uh, and I think this might be the last one. We've got fractional powers, okay? Now fractional powers are pretty straightforward as well, I think. So say we've got 25 to the power of a half, okay? As it's half, we're gonna take the square root. So that just means we're gonna take the square root like this. And so we get five. This is supposed to be a three. I'll rewrite it so it's a bit neater. But if we've got eight to the power of three, one third, then instead of taking the square root, we're gonna take the cube root. So we're gonna get the cube root of eight, which is gonna equal two. And so the general form or rule for this is, say we have a number a to the power of one over n, then that just means we're gonna take the nth root of that number a, okay? So even with fractions, it's not too hard, I don't think. So let's look at some examples that are gonna kind of demonstrate all of the things we've looked at. So example one, we've got eight to the power of three uh, over two. And so using one of the first rules we looked at, which is rule three, okay, this one here, what I could do is rewrite this, okay, just to show you what's going on. So we've got eight to the power of three over two. I could write that as eight to the power of three multiplied by one half. And so if I look at this, well, that's equal to, well, eight to the power of three all to the power of a half using the rules we looked at earlier. And so this is the same as the square root of eight cubed. Or we could do it the other way around. We could say that, well, this is equal to eight to the power of a half times three and so that's equal to the square root of eight or to the power of three. And so these two things are the exact same and it doesn't matter what order you do them in, but usually when you get a question, it's better to do the square root first because then you're gonna be cubing or squaring a smaller number, which makes it easier for you. The second example, we've got four over nine to the power of negative a half. So the first thing we're gonna do is remove the negative by flipping or taking the reciprocal of the fraction. So we're gonna get nine over four all to the power of a half. And that's just gonna be equal to, well, nine to the power of a half over four to the power of a half, which is equal to the square root of nine over the square root of four, and then we get three over two. So again, that's not too difficult. If we've got something like example three, where we've got say x squared uh, multiplied by y to the power of four multiplied by z all cubed, just multiply each, or just cube each bit individually. So this is the same as x squared to the power of three multiplied by y to the power of four to the power of three multiplied by z to the power of three. And so we're using our indice rule where we multiply the powers now. And so we're gonna get x to the power of two times three, so x to the power of six, multiplied by y to the power of four times three, so y to the power of 12, and then multiplied by z cubed. So that was okay too. And finally, we're gonna look at this where we've got x to the power of four y cubed all over x y squared. And so we're gonna use, I think it was our second rule where we're dividing to subtract. So this is the same as x to the power of four. And you can imagine there's a power of one there. So four minus one and y to the power of three minus two. So we get x to the power of three multiplied by y is our answer. So 
Hopefully this video was useful. If it was, like the video, subscribe and share it. And thank you for watching.